months back, there were allegations by one member of the association, one unit owner, concerning the alleged non-issuance of permits for some of the work that's being done at the building. And we know allegations were made, and, and we know because I, Susan reported to you that she was contacted by an investigator from the DCA, and because I reported to you earlier that I talked with that same investigator. We all know where the allegations came from, what the allegations were. And I think I reported to the board before that when I talked to the investigator, he said to me, are my report's done, and the individual has had it for a while, but he didn't like the results of my report and my findings. And so he came back to me with another allegation and a tape of a meeting, which he said proved that Susan Fitzpatrick and the building inspector were related or had a relationship. Of course, that's what prompted his call to Susan. She called me, I called him, and that's how we find out what really happens. He said he understood that all of that came about from a meeting when Susan said to the board at an open meeting on camera that she had a relationship, a good business professional relationship with the construction official. And this was said in the context of, of a report to the board. Well, you know, it was taken out of context. And this individual, this unit owner, decided that this uh, was worth going back to the state and demanding still a further investigation. Anyhow, the investigator said, I'll be finished with my report in a few minutes, and I'll send you a cop. Said, Thanks a lot. And I sort of forgot about it. I forgot about it until I read a mission statement put out by this same individual, a mission statement for concerned unit owners. And one of the concerns that they're going to look into is the allegation that there were no permits issued for certain jobs and there were penalties and there's a state investigation pending and everything else. Well, I saw this and I said, ah, whatever happened to the report? I called the inspector back up. He said, oh, I sent that to this same individual over a month ago. He's been sitting on that report for a month. I said, wait a minute, that's not possible. He just issued a statement saying your investigation is still pending. Folks, there's something really sick. There's something really wrong. When you have a report that isn't quite the report you want, but it vindicates the people that you've been accusing of wrongdoing, you're sitting on that report, and a month later you put a statement out that the investigation is still ongoing. If you were selling anything along with that statement, it would be called fraud. And basically, again, that's what I think you have, have going on here. I'm not, I'm not going to name names. I think everybody knows who we're talking about. As long as people want to remain anonymous some days of the week, I, I guess I'll respect that for the night. But you want to tell us what the conclusion of the report was about? The conclusion of the report was, just like Susan explained, the conclusion of the report was, <coughs> Everybody applied for every permit they were supposed to have. Because there was a change in construction officials in the town, which didn't go all that smoothly, there was an application pending when one officer left and the other one came in that got overlooked when it was found. That's violations the by the that's town, that's violations were issued and penalties were assessed, and that's before the state investigator ever investigated. When it was determined what happened, and the state investigator says this, this was proper, the violations were rescinded and the penalties were withdrawn. And there was no impropriety whatsoever on the part of anybody in management here oh. or any construction official. I, uh, I think it might yeah, be very good to read the last, last paragraph, paragraph of the Based on the evidence obtained during this investigation, this office has concluded that there are no violations of the Uniform Construction Code. Therefore, I recommend the case be closed with no further action from this office. I don't know how you get a cleaner bill of health than that. This person went and told and, lies And he about had it, that report and for had one month. investigated by the state of yeah. New Jersey. And continued to lies. tell the lies. And continued continues. to tell the lies. And I want to just add for the record, 
I am in no way related to Brian Rivero. I don't believe, to the best of my knowledge, he comes from a family of Orthodox Jews. Um, I'm also not in any way, shape, or form having any relationship with Brian Rivero. And if you ask him, um, we probably don't like each other anymore. Right um, I just can't believe that somebody would make an allegation like that. And I just, for the record, want to clarify that in any sentence I made where we have a relationship, it was implied to be a good, working, professional business relationship. And it was in con the right context as well at the time. Can I just say one thing? Yes. As long as we're getting this all out on the table finally, so right. that everybody can understand. There were a couple of mistakes made, though, and I want to clarify that. And there were a couple of fines levied, and I want that to be oh. on the record. They've been yeah. rescinded according to the well, state. Well, that's not necessarily. There, there were certainly mistakes want, but, that were made on both parts, on the part of the galaxy and on the part of the town. Submissions that were made to the town were inadvertently misplaced and lost at various times, sure. and there is one instance here where a contractor indicated to both Chris and myself that he had a permit that in fact he had not received. They had applied for the permit, but he had not received the permit, and that fell through the cracks. However, the Galaxy has never been fined, has never received a fine. In both instances, it was the contractor. In one instance, it was an electrical contractor. And in one instance, it was a cooling tower contractor who did receive the fines. Once, and again, when these things happen, when the penalties are issued, it's, it's not an end all. We then go up to the town and discuss why a violation or a penalty was issued. And in one case, it was found that certainly the town had erred as well as the galaxy, and the penalty had been reduced, uh, cut in half, as a matter of fact, from an original uh, $6,000 to $3,000. In another instance, everything had been rescinded when the town realized that we had filed. And in a third instance, I believe that uh, Nico Electrical Contractors had been doing work in the garage where they had not finished getting a permit. There had been a misunderstanding in the town, and when they went to the town and procured their permit on the same day, that fine was mitigated as well. No. Those are the instances that we know of. Yeah, but they're not part of the investigation. But they were not part of against this against investigation you. or so these allegations. Right. Bob, I have a question. Is it possible that this individual uh, found new material evidence that might, that he's trying to reopen this case or something? I mean, that's possible. I mean, it, no, the states, the states no, it's not possible because... Couldn't find anything new that's going to affect this uh, the No, the date, the date that I sent the memo to you was just a couple days ago. Is the date I talked to the investigator, and unless something happened in the last 48 hours, the answer to that is no. January it certainly, 25th. certainly didn't happen a month ago or two weeks ago when this... I'm just curious. I'm not familiar yeah. with all the, uh, the dates. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, not, not possible. I said to Harlem before, anything's possible. This time, no. That's <laughs> not possible. Last part. You, last item. You're welcome. Last item I want to report on. Report on, but the last item I have to report to you is a telephone call.